Music. What's up, y'all? Thank y'all for being patient waiting on me, guys. I was trying to finish up a phone call right quick. <laughs> I don't know why people call me this early knowing I'm about to go live, but nevertheless, good morning. Happy Thursday to everyone. Good morning. We're almost to Friday, y'all. We are almost to Friday. Thank the Lord. Good morning to everybody joining this morning. Hopefully you guys got your coffee and your tea and you're getting where you need to be or you got where you need to be. All right. I got to wait till my tea cool down so I don't burn my lips off, child, because I need my tea this morning. My throat is trying to act a fool, honey, but we're going to press on through and get it going all right so again happy thursday to everybody uh everything said in the video is alleged let me get my banner up child is alleged and in my opinion and is used for fair use and entertainment lord all right let's get on into the show honey y'all know celebrity news is always first and that's where we will begin all right now a kentucky woman quits her job you guys uh, after winning $90,000 on a scratch-off ticket, getting $64,800 after taxes. Is that enough money to quit your job? Y'all can put it down in there. Is that enough money to quit your job? I don't think so, okay? I need, I need that thing bumped up to a few millions, okay? I'm not sitting at home giving up my job for 90 k I'm sorry. And then you still ain't getting the 90 k They got to take all them damn taxes out. So you sitting on $64,800, bitch, what? No. <laughs> yeah, let's go on and get into this. Because when I saw this, I was like, ma'am, what kind of drugs you on over there? Okay. What kind of weed you smoking over there, sis? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. All right. So you guys can sit there. I'm going to let you guys let it catch up because I know it's a little latency. I like for you guys to watch with me as we share. And I know there's a little latency. I hope you guys can everyone see. Can everyone see? All right, I see it on my screen over there. All right, let's get started. Kentucky woman quits her job after winning 90K scratch-off lottery and received 64800 after taxes. She says, I was unhappy with my job, so God made a way. He did make a way, but not for you to leave your job. Maybe for, Well, you can find another job. You can always find another job. But hey, do what you got to do, child. Now, this says that a Kentucky woman quit her job after winning the 90K, according to ABC 12 News. Uh, this says Kentucky lottery official said that Rashawn Tolliver, honey, of Hopkinsville, won 90K on a scratch out. Baby, I need that. Says that Tolliver says that she immediately called her son and boyfriend into her old boyfriend eh, 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 into her room after scratching the winning ticket. Says that I screamed. She says, I've never hollered that loud before. She says one minute it's like breeze. She says the next minute I was like, stop laughing. She says, I can hear the scream over and over again in my head. It says that after taxes, she received 64800 She says, I was happy. I was unhappy with my job and God made a way. She says that I felt bad leaving, she says, but I'm relieved to be able to quit my job. She says, now we don't know what Mrs. Tolliver's financial circumstances are. Perhaps the winnings will allow her a little breathing room before she finds another job, right? Because you're going to need another job or starts a business of her own. I don't know if I will start a business of my own, unless it's like a small, small business with 64000 That's really not a lot of money if you look at it, especially if, you have, if you've accrued debt. Uh, once you start paying debt off, that shit is going to start adding up, adding up. Your money, gonna, you're probably going to be looking at a good 20000 by the time you, I don't know how much debt she has, but by the time you pay your debt, you're probably going to pay out like half of that. And then $30,000 ain't no money. Shit, I could spend that in a day. I'm just saying, I mean, it's great that she got the 64800 but that's not enough for me to walk away from my job. I mean, whether you like it or not, but like I said, y'all find you another job, put that money in savings. You got 64000 honey. Put a lot of that in savings and don't touch it, honey, for a rainy day. Start paying off some debts. Find you another job to keep your money rolling and do what you got to do. I don't, I don't know. When they say boyfriend, boyfriend ain't going nowhere now that you don't got that check, okay? He ain't. I'm sorry. He going to probably help you blow through that shit, too, if he don't work. Uh, but let's contain, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess shout out to you, girl. I guess. I mean, damn. <laughs> Says that she has broke syndrome. I, I yes, yeah, says that she is an hour and a half from me. And okay, in Hopton. Okay. Yes, I see y'all said that ain't no money. Says she would be back after that medical insurance bill. Okay, yes, that's not enough money. She looks young. The money will be gone next week. Yep, yeah, that's another Ariane child. She's gonna blow straight through that money. All right, so a Detroit teacher, you guys, who won teacher of the month finds herself um in a lot of trouble after a parent discovered that she actually has a rap career you guys outside of work outside of teaching you know as a teacher she also does rapping and i think her problem with it was that she involved some of her students 
to uh, be in like videos and stuff like that. So the parents found out and they found that it was a little inappropriate. So what they did was they uh, contacted the school and made trouble for her. OK. All right. So let's let's take a look. I like what I like when I'm doing car chronicles from home because I like to be able to share screens with you guys. Uh, versus when I'm in the car where you guys just have to listen and imaginary, you know, imagine rather. All right. So I'm sharing. Let's let's give it a chance to catch up because there's a little latency. I want everyone to see. All right. I see it there. All right. So uh, as you guys can see, they say, is this fair? Detroit teacher who recently won teacher of the month fired after parent discovers her rap career outside of school. That's her with the students. That's the teacher with the red wig on child looking like a uh, sexy red child. <laughs> you sexy red by night and school teacher by day. Girl, girl, girl. All right. So it says, what do you think about this? A Detroit teacher is searching for answers after she was fired from her job simply because she was an inspired rapper in her free time. It says that Dominique Brown is a U.S. history teacher at Taylor Preparatory School, high school rather, in Detroit, Michigan, where she won the prestige award of teacher of the month last, just last December. It says that she then... Uh, says that then a few months later, she got uh, the unfortunate news that she had been fired because an, of an anonymous parent complained about her being unprofessional due to her rap career that she has outside of school. What y'all think about that? Would you care if your, your uh, kid's teacher was a rapper uh, outside of school? Would you guys care about that if she was a great teacher? She's got all these accolades and awards being uh, teacher of the month. Would you guys care if your kid's teacher was a rapper? All right, says that Brown, who has been teaching for seven years, tells Fox News that the parent reached out to the school district all the way back in October of 2023, a few months before she won the award, to report her for being a bad influence on the children because she has a because she was a rapper. Says that after the initial complaint, that Brown says that she went through five months of meetings to defend her hobby against the district. It also goes on to say that despite the parent's verbal complaint, that Brown says that she never received a formal complaint or met the parent in person before the suspicious firing. OK, uh, let's go ahead and listen to because I ain't about to read all this shit. Let's go ahead and listen, listen to what they have to say here. Back it up and forward and play. Teacher of the month honors. And then two months later, she was fired. But it wasn't about anything she did in the classroom. She says a parent complained about her rap career, which was off the clock. By now, Drippin' Honey's music video, Drippin' 101, has been seen by tens of thousands across numerous social media platforms. And it combines two of her passions, rapping and some of the students she's taught. That's right, a U.S. history teacher who's moonlighting as a rapper. But last month, she was forced out of her teaching job, and it started with a parent's complaint. That's when the first meeting was with my dean and the principal, and they were just telling me, like, hey, um, a parent said that they see your social media and that you're a black influence because you're a rapper. Drippin' Honey's real name is Dominique Brown. <laughs> She says that the parent continued to complain, even though the educator was named Teacher of the Month. Despite asking for a complaint in writing, Dominique says she never received it. And Dominique believes that she was discriminated against. I was like, hey, well, can we tell the parent to come in and see professionalism, see me in the classroom, see me after school, see me at all the games, see me dropping kids off every day, buying food, doing all these things. Can they come see me in my element before they try to say I'm unprofessional in it? Was there at any point? Anything that was brought up that said your rap career may have the lyrics that you use may have been a bad influence on some of the students that you have. Well, the parents would just stay anonymous and she didn't really give too much detail on what she did or didn't like. And the school didn't give me too much detail either. Music is part of the culture. We from Motown. This is what we do. So it's not like it's unheard of. It's the culture. And when you we look like me, you just understand it a little more better that it's not that I'm trying to deter these kids from stopping their dreams. In a statement, a spokesperson for Taylor Preparatory High School, which is a charter school, said they're aware of Brown's allegations, but student and employee privacy rights limit what they can say. The statement went on to say, quote, student well-being remains at the forefront of everything we do, and we will continue fostering a distraction-free teaching and learning environment focused on student success. If I was a horrible teacher, y'all would have dropped me the day it was a problem. You, did you ever feel that they were transparent enough for you? Absolutely not. If there ever was an opportunity, Taylor said, hey, look, we want you back. Would you consider it? Um, no, I just want this to be an example for them to do better. 
Dominique says that she's in the process of trying to seek out an attorney and take some legal action. In Taylor, I'm Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News. There you go. So she's probably going to uh, sue them for unlawful termination. That's probably what it's going to be. Um, I don't think that it's an issue if a teacher is a rapper outside of work, as long as, like I saw you guys saying, as long as it's not about unalive and that hardcore rap where it's like, you know, talking about drugs and unalive and people. Like, yeah, especially if you have the children in your videos promoting your music, I uh, probably shouldn't have them in your videos either. Um, but I don't see a, an issue with that. Now, if she's in the strip clubs and she's, you know, kind of like that. Is she out there on the pole and doing some very egregious, nasty, nasty stuff? Uh, if she's out here on, you know, websites and, and busting it wide open, that might be an issue. But if you're just out here on this right here on your Tupac child, you crit walking and, you know, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't see nothing wrong with that. And y'all done gave her teacher of the year, uh, teacher of the month. So obviously it's something you saw in her that you thought was uh, a great example. So it's, it's a hating parent. That's what it is, child. It's a hating parent. She probably want to have bars if she ain't got no bars. So she's sitting at home hating, okay? Girl, go on out there and rap, child. Go on out there and rap. I hope her, this is really going to just help her uh, little rap career blow up now. This is, is, look, she's on, what is this, Neighborhood Talk? She's on Neighborhood Talk now. It's just going to send more followers her way, and she's going to blow up, and somebody going to see it, and she's probably going to get a little deal or something, you know? But, yeah, go on, girl. Do what you got to do. All right, let's get on out. Right let's get off this topic, child. Let's move on, child. We got more. There's more. There is more. By now, you guys have heard that Chance the Rapper. I like Chance the Rapper, okay? Uh, he and his wife, Christian, they decided, child, it's five years and two children that they are going to divorce. All right. Now, he's one of those types that uh like to be out here hanging out in script clubs and all that, too. Uh, I don't see nothing wrong with going to strip clubs as long as it's not obsessive, okay? I, I, excessive rather i'm talking about obsessive excessive okay as long as you're not in there all the damn time like todd from damn uh real housewives of atlanta he'd be in the strip club until the bitch closed candy talked about that all right he because he's friends with uh the person i think who owns the strip club so todd be there child well after the strip club strip club closes and that's just too much you up in there somebody said not my man i know that's right but uh, so Chance the Rapper Child, he is getting divorced. As you guys know, he was in the news a little, a few months back uh, where he went on some type of vacation and he was seen grinding up on some girl. You guys are very inappropriate. I was like, ain't you married, Chance? But uh, y'all know he is one of the judges on, um, I figured y'all gonna do that bullshit. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, they, um, yeah, he was, uh, y'all know he is a judge on The Voice now, okay? So, yeah, I guess I like him on there. He's a little dry on there. But anyway, yeah, so he is getting divorced from his wife for five years. And, child, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I want to say it's him. It's got to be him because, baby, listen, you Chance, you be doing too much. He, he be trying to look like he's real quiet, but Chance be doing the most, okay? He does. I don't really like his rapping or whatever, but let's go on to get into this damn Chance to rap a bullshit because it's child. Five years, y'all can only make it five years. And I saw pictures uh, and videos of their wedding. They had a beautiful wedding. They spent a lot of money on that damn wedding, too. It's so crazy how they spend millions of dollars on these damn weddings and don't stay married. No time, okay? Jesus. Beautiful girl. Their kids are beautiful, too. Two beautiful daughters they have. All right, so it says that um, says that they're probably never the same after he was caught catching some clappers at a carnival uh, that time, okay? So let's go ahead and show the picture first where he was dancing. All right, that's him, Chance the Rapper, out of town, child, dancing up on a girl, grinding. That's inappropriate for a married man. I'm sorry. You are a married man on this picture, and you should not be. Look how he looking, though. <laughs> Why he zooming in like that? Like, dude, 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 dude. Uh, that's Chance the Rapper, child, being disrespectful as hell to your wife. And if somebody caught a picture and posted the shit online, I'm sure your wife saw it. I'm sure she was upset about that. So now, after five years and two children... They are deciding, they said that they were separated at some point, probably after that damn picture circulated. Uh, but he's saying this is a um, statement that they released, says that, um, good morning, guys, says that after a period of separation that the two of us have arrived at the decision to part ways, of course, says that we came to this decision amicably and with gratitude for the time that we spent together, says that God has blessed us with two beautiful daughters who we will continue to raise together. Says that we kindly ask for privacy and respect as we navigate this transition. Well, you ask for privacy when you was digging all up in somebody's ass at the carnival over there, bumping and grinding like your ass was a single man. You ain't want no privacy then. Old boy standing behind you, damn sure won't give you no privacy while you was all up over there, <laughs> grinding up on some random African chick up over there, child. Good boy. 
people always want privacy when they when they're going through some shit that they initiated but then want no privacy when they asked was doing what they were doing i don't know chance like i don't know if i can give you no privacy because i'm nosy okay i'm probably gonna keep looking up shit now that you said you want privacy just because i'm not giving you no privacy how about that okay hmm. but they are getting divorced and that's all we got to say about him goodbye chance all right i did like you a little bit but you done got on my damn nerves now all right moving on child uh four baltimore prison guards were found to be all pregnant at the same damn time by the same damn inmate ain't that some mess now y'all hear about that all the time where uh inmates child be out here impregnating <laughs> uh security guards why they sleeping with security guards i don't know okay but the prisoners up in there, they be bumping and grinding with the prisoners up in there, if y'all can follow me. So why you tooting it up, putting your ass up to the poles up there, child, to the bars, and out here getting pregnant, it's beyond me. That's nasty as hell. Some of them don't need to get to wash their ass every day. So you up in there sleeping around with these fools, child. Let me go and share this bullshit. Child, 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 child. This is the, this is the man who impregnated, as you guys can see, four women, child. Let's let it catch up so y'all can see with me. That is him. All right, so four Baltimore prison guards were found, were all found to be impregnated by the same inmate, guys. All right, so um, says the four female prison guards in Baltimore fell pregnant to the same inmate, according to authorities, honey, who have busted a major smuggling gang inside the jail system. Now, they're saying in 2013, four correction officers, Karen Owens, Katera Stevenson, Shania Brooks, and Tiffany Linder, faced charges for allegedly falling pregnant to the inmate, Tavon White, while he was behind bars. All right, it says the charging documents revealed that Owens had Tavon tattooed on her neck, child, and Stevenson had Tavon tattooed on her wrist. Tavon must be throwing that D up in there, because damn, y'all, enough for y'all to tattoo his name up on you? girl no all right so it goes on to say <laughs> that white also allegedly gave gifts to three corrections officers what kind of gifts where you get them from okay three honey buns y'all you gave out three honey buns oh okay from the commissary you know what i got three honey buns and passed them out to the security guard all right so it says that owens honey owens stevenson's stevenson and brooks received a diamond ring and luxury cars from where and how if you locked up child what is this going on <laughs> oh my god y'all what the hell somebody said the shawshank redemption <laughs> says it provided not only one but four women from inside wow says and some of us can't even get a call back from dudes who are free okay i know that's right i'm trying to figure out let's go back though let's go back let's go back because they said that he was giving out diamond rings and luxury cars. Now, he must have been like a little drug lord or something and got connections on the outside. Where he would say, okay, now, when you see Big Tony over there on uh on, on, on Fifth Street over there, he going to have your, your diamond ring in your car, okay? Yeah, going over there on Fifth Street, Big Tony, he got you. I done called him, child, and done told him to give you so-and-so and so, okay? So you got some connections from the outside because you damn sure didn't do it from the inside. But, uh, yes, yeah, so he was getting out expensive gifts, child, and rings and all that. Like, he about to marry somebody, and you got four Security guards working at the same damn prison pregnant. Ain't that some hot damn mess right there? Lord, 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 Lord. I don't know why these women do that. Like, and y'all leave. My thing is this: you're at, you're going to work to the prison. You're leaving every day to be on the outside to be free. So you can find no free men on the outside, child, to be out here messing around with and or getting pregnant. Ain't no telling what he doing up in there. Because if he's serving a whole lot of time, he ain't going nowhere. No time soon. So he is probably definitely getting banged out by somebody up in there. And then you turn around and mess with him. And as I said, if you're if you're a prisoner or an inmate, they don't get to take baths every day. So that's gotta be nasty. You in there with the dirty schlong. When you can be out here getting, you know, free schlong that's clean. Girl, I don't know what people be thinking. It's the desperation for me. It's the nasty shit for me. It's the child. It's the audacity or the uh destiny, like Wanda call it. For me, child. I, I can't. I cannot, y'all. Let's move on. Thanks for being here. Tea talk with your girl. Says the morning all got to call me something as soon as I spoke. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. And any other content creator joining. All right. Just stop sharing, child. Move on. We're going to breeze on through these damn things. All right. So Kevin Hart, honey, is accusing his ex-assistant, Maisha Shakes, of eavesdropping on his damn conversations. Because y'all know he has a lawsuit against her. Somebody said no free me and child. 
Uh, so he is suing, y'all know he's suing his ex-assistant, Maisha Ma Shakes, for doing that interview with Tasha K. He's also coming after Tasha K as well for doing the interview after he asked her once she did the interview not to put it out there. She put it out there anyway. Um, and so now he's decided to sue her, trying to say that it's damaging his character. Well, you stop cheating then. Damn, that's damaging your character. And your marriage. But his wife, she's a beard, so she's going to stay anyway. Kevin been caught so many damn times cheating on that girl. Okay, little Lean Wan over there. What's the girl's name? Mulan. Is that the girl's name? Kevin, Kevin Hart's wife? Mulan. His ass over there eating egg noodles and cheating too. I said it before, child. Over there eating egg noodles and, and damn dumplings and shit over there cheating too. And he ain't leaving. He started getting her pregnant. She'll get her pregnant and go out there and cheat. And her ass gonna stay right the hell there with his little dwarf ass. Let's go on and get into him, child. I, I can't take it, child. I can't. I can't. All right, boom. There we go. Let's share so you guys can see. Kevin is doing the most. I think he's fighting more to uh, keep his, his bullshit under wraps because he don't want people to know the real Kevin. So that's why you're going after this assistant because you know she know a lot. Now, it says the Kevin Hart's assistant, I mean, Kevin Hart accuses his ex-assistant, Maisha Shakes, of covertly listening to his private conversations through the wall, child, in his lawsuit against her, okay? So she over there like this, child, with the ear on the wall, like, mm-hmm. And he had cheated. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I'm going to tell that shit too. Yep. I'm about to call Tasha can't tell her all this shit. And that's exactly what she did. Now I said that the comedian and actor who is 44 years old is accusing Maisha Shakes, honey, of eavesdropping on his private conversations during her time on his staff. It says that in new documents obtained, of course, by Radar Online, shout out to them, on Monday, April 1st, says that Kevin Hart, who is suing Maisha Shakes for alleged false and defamatory comments that she made during an interview with blogger Tasha K. Tasha K coming up in a lot of bullshit, okay? Yes, God. Says that she also allegedly listened in on his personal interactions and disclosed private information to Tasha K, okay? Y'all remember she did that interview a few months back. Tasha K, babe, was pulling out all the tea on Kevin Hart. He was mad about that shit, I remember. Says that he says of Maisha Shakes in the file and says, for example, she spoke about my interaction with my wife during the time period after revelations regarding the Las Vegas incident and came and come to light that had come to light. I'm sorry. Says that he claimed that she received the information by eavesdropping and listening through the walls. Child. He goes on to say that I understand from speaking with my security personnel and Shakes admitted during the interview that Shakes obtained some of the information that she discussed in the interview by covertly listening through the walls with her ear to the wall. Damn. To private interaction occurring behind closed doors at our offices. OK, child. Mm -mm -mm. It goes on to say that he added that due to Shakes remarks that he will continue to suffer damage. <laughs> continue to suffer, says it damage to my reputation and thus to my present and future business and financial prospects. Shut up, Kevin. And, and the cheating allegations before that didn't. The cheating allegations that you went through, a plethora of them hoes, before that, that didn't. Oh, okay. okay. All right, he said that it made a secret, uh, says that uh, he says that uh, Shakes falsely alleged that he made a secret video recording of a romantic encounter I had in Las Vegas in 2017 that I faced criminal charges regarding that uh, separatitious recording, child. I like that word. Says that uh, Kevin Hart was uh, previously sued for $60 million by a woman named Montia Savage who accused him of conspiring with his now former friend, Jonathan J.T. Jackson, to secretly film their sexual encounter. Not, not he out here on this Diddy bullshit in Las Vegas, child. Let me find out you out here acting like Diddy because you was hanging around Diddy. So now you got somebody filming you, child, allegedly doing some sexual egregious type of stuff, child. Let me find out you got somebody head behind the headboard and not your wife. And you got somebody over there on this bullshit right here filming it and zooming in, child, while you back there. Uh, pop, lock, and drop. And let me find out, Kevin, with your little ass. He about this tall, okay? Y'all know Kevin Hart about this tall <laughs> from here to here. <laughs> Who is out here trying to be banging Kevin Hart? I keep saying, baby, money money gets you places that you just can't get by yourself. I'm trying to tell you. What about checking for his ass like that prior to him becoming famous? I promise you. Kevin, you are a dwarf, sir, okay? No one was checking for you prior to you coming to Hollywood, okay? No one. I promise you. Nobody buddy, okay? <laughs> Anybody think Kevin Hart fine? You can put it in the chat. I ain't going to say nothing about it, all right? Anybody going to put a one if you think Kevin Hart is fine out here, child. Put a two if it's a hell no for you. Put a one if you think he's fine. <laughs> 
If you're like, oh my God, Kevin Hart, oh my God, he is so fine out here, girl. Oh my God, Lord have mercy, child. I need to go change my panty liner every time I look at him, girl. Put up two if you think, like, hell no. Kevin Hart, hell no, child. Mm, it's a child for me. <laughs> I see some twos coming in. <laughs> Somebody, Rosalind, put a whole gang of twos. I know that shit, right? <laughs> Somebody said two because of the black lips. Okay. <laughs> said Kevin looks like a uh, little black book. Y'all are team too much. Y'all be hell in the comments. I love it. Okay. <laughs> yes, God. All right. Let's move on, honey. Let's move on. We got some good topics. All right. We got some good topics. All right. So uh, somebody else that I like, y'all know that Tiana Taylor, honey, and Amon Schumper, they are still going through it. I want them to go on and divorce, Lord. I'm about sick of them. I, I, I am. I like y'all, but all this damn fighting is really getting on my damn nerves. Seriously, okay? Let's go ahead and get into them, honey. Shout out to the Jasmine brand, Lord. I want them to go on and get divorced. He done took $4 million. I'm still mad about that shit like it's my money, okay? How, how you just go and take uh, $4 million out of a joint account is beyond me. Let's go ahead and share. Let's let it catch up because we got a little latency. <laughs> so somebody said they thought he had a disability when he first came out. Y'all are too much, okay? Y'all thought Kevin Hart had a disability. <laughs> somebody said like Splinter from Ninja Turtles. I cannot, okay? <laughs> Y'all are too much. Let's move on, child. Tayana Taylor accuses Amon Schumpert of diminishing marital estate by almost $4 million and failing to pay taxes on their Miami property. And I think he's doing that deliberately because if you and Tayana were still together, you would be handling all the business you got to handle. But because she won't take you back and because your little money is starting to look a little funny now that she, you know, them broke off from your ass. Because she's really the moneymaker in this situation because you're not, y'all know he ain't playing ball no more. And he tried to have a little rap career and that shit went triple cardboard or quadruple cardboard ain't none of his music really did nothing but uh she's she's like able to be out here producing she does her music which is very good i listen to her uh and, and she's you know she's a great actress as well but she's out here giving it's like everything tayana taylor touch it just turns to gold she's very 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 talented in everything she does so he is out here i think he's one of those bitter ex-husbands now so he's doing everything that he can to be an asshole in this situation all right, let's go ahead and read. It says that things are getting more intense between the former lovebirds, honey, Tayana Taylor and, and Amon Schuper. It says that the pair married, of course, you guys know, in 2016, and after seven years of marriage, that Tayana quietly filed for divorce last January. Now, despite their best attempts to keep the matter private, her soon-to-be ex was seemingly against the divorce proceedings, staying under wraps. Of course. It says that the judge ultimately denied the... Uh, a thousand and one stars plea to sell the records okay or seal the records i'm sorry i can read over here it says that since then that the public has watched the exes battle in and out of court and now allegations surrounding the retired nba player have recently been revealed all right now according to court documents obtained it says by another publication that tayana taylor has accused amon schubert uh both 33 of diminishing their marital estate by almost four million she also claimed that he failed to pay the taxes on a marital property in Miami, Florida. It goes on to say that Tiana Taylor also filed for divorce in Georgia as the that's the location of their primary residence. It says that the Southern state automatically um, issues divorcing couples a domestic standing order. According to a law website, this is designed to protect both parties from conduct such as a spouse disposing of marital assets while the divorce is in process. OK, it says, however, it's alleged that Amon Schumer violated this order by taking several loans from their marital accounts. It says that Taylor's legal team uh, reportedly noticed something was off on March 7th of 2024 when Schumer submitted current statements from investment accounts. It said that her counsel was alarmed by a major decrease in some of the values compared to the figures on uh, the October 2023 20, 20, 20, statements. Okay, so he's been taking money and trying to hide under the radar. It says that a financial analysis, uh, analysis brought uh, into the invest. Hold on, a, fi a financial analyst. <laughs> Why well, can't say the analyst? Damn, was brought in to investigate to ensure that suspicious um, suspicions were right as market forces could have caused the decrease not it says that, however uh since the investigation that it was allegedly discovered that uh Schumper took a loan of 44,000 on December 7th of 2023 from a marital Merrill Lynch account 
and a second loan for $886,285 was also reportedly taken from another marital Merrill Lynch account as well. So he's been taking money that he's not supposed to be taking uh, and never said anything. And it was never agreed to and or signed off on between the two of them because they are in the middle of a divorce. He can't do that. So now he's probably going to be sanctioned because of that. OK, so she is using her lawyers uh, to come against him for that, as she should. And y'all know he is now dating someone else, as we talked about him before. Uh, Tayana said that she had issues with him and this new girl that he's dating where when it's time for them and their children to uh, have visitations, that this girl is always there. Plus, this girl also has her own child who is said to be spending nights over when Tayana's children are there. And Tayana doesn't like that. So he's just I think he's just really doing too much at this point. Now, it's bad enough that you have your new chick who you're still trying to learn around your children. OK, during the time that you're supposed to be spending time with them and visiting with them. Uh, and your children are seeing this woman laid up in the bed and stuff like that. That's inappropriate behavior. Okay. If you still learning her, she shouldn't be around your children. Uh, and now that you're taking money, it's giving too much, Iman. You need to calm the hell down and, and, and comply with whatever the, the court proceedings are asking you to do. You're going to have to put that money back. And I don't know where the hell you're going to get it from because you ain't doing shit out here. And that's on period. Your money, your, your music ain't doing nothing. And I don't know what you get from your little basketball career, but sir. He is jealous. And Tayana was saying that's one of the reasons why they're getting that they're getting divorced is because of his jealousy for her. She had to turn down jobs when they were together because he would be jealous of her getting all the spotlight. When they'd be on red carpets and they would ask him to step back that they just wanted pictures of her, he would get mad. And she said that they would go home and they would argue because he felt like he was being pushed aside in her career. But that's her career. You support as her husband. You guys are one. If she's getting jobs, understand that the money that she's making is coming in the household and you're going to still have access to that as her husband. So don't be jealous because she's able to climb in the, in the industry. Support her as your wife. Don't sit back and be jealous. That's the problem I have with Martell. You didn't have the business acumen as male, but you would be jealous of her and low key be trying to pull her down because you didn't have, you know, that smart, witty thing about you like she did. Melody carried that marriage. Obviously, Tayana is carrying this marriage and he's jealous. You got to watch that, women. If you are with a man who is jealous of you, you got to watch that because jealousy brings about a lot of negativity. That could be a dangerous thing in a relationship or marriage. That's another Martell. I see y'all putting it in there. That's another Martell. Jealousy is dangerous in relationships. Support. Support your spouse. It's always going to be one that's here and one that's just right below. And men sometimes can't take that. Men sometimes cannot take the fact that their woman is making more money and that she's kind of moving in leaps and bounds ahead of them. They can't take it because it crushes their ego. Because in the real world, men think, okay, I'm supposed to be the money maker. I'm the head of the household. I'm supposed to do this, 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 and this. So when the woman come in and they're making all the money and they're doing more than him, they don't like that shit. So they try to sell, you know, they try to sabotage certain things. So this woman had to give up jobs in Hollywood and say, no, I ain't gonna be able to do it. And had to give this false, you know, give out these lies about why she couldn't take the job. When in reality, it's because she didn't want to go home and argue with her husband because he was not able to congratulate her. That's sad. I don't want to be with nobody like that. I don't want to turn jobs down because you're going to be jealous and make me feel bad and throw it in my face. And, you know, <laughs> that's so standard when you go on the red carpet and you're doing good things. You probably take a picture with her and then say, OK, Amon, can you step aside? We just want some pictures of just, you know, Tayana right now. So he's standing over there, face all balled up like, oh, wait till we get home. I'm going to fuss this bitch out. Because, yeah, this is supposed to be just us. It's supposed to be us. Why I can't be in the picture? He on that petty bullshit. Child. A lot of it had to do with Tayana. Let me just say. Because when you're inviting people in your bedroom, a lot of that stuff, they lose, men lose respect for you. He lost respect for you early on because you agreed to some shit that you should have never agreed to. They were having threesomes and stuff too. They were having women in the bedroom too. And now it's a surprise that he running out here cheating and doing stuff because you done let him, you done introduced him to a world that he shouldn't have been introduced to. No, absolutely not. All right, so let's go on and get into this last topic, you guys, because I do have a meeting coming up here very, very soon. All right, so of course you guys have heard by now that um, Chris Fletcher's son, um, 
have been arrested. Okay, y'all know he had this whole crime stoppers thing out there where it said that he stole a credit card and bought some damn tires out here, child. Uh, don't know why he didn't go to his mom and his daddy because we both know they are loaded. Chris Fletcher has several businesses. He's a real estate agent. Uh, he has a cleaning company, which he said on the show. He has some other things going on. So he's he's got a nice little bag on him. Nell has her own business at the daycare um, and some other things going on that, that you know, where she has a nice little steady income. And plus, they're both receiving love and marriage Huntsville checks from home. So they're loaded. We already saw where they live. They live in a nice, beautiful home. So they got they got the bag. But, you know, their children are grown now. And it's like this son, Chris Jr., just can't seem to get it right. So he's just out here, child, partying it up, as we saw him a few weeks ago, hanging out with Marceau, which I don't even fucking know why. Uh, then his brother, Lance, was out here booed up with Destiny and her damn cock eyes. I don't know what that was about either. But now uh, it looks like maybe Chris Jr. might have known his ass was going to jail. He's like, look, let me go, let me go and shake my ass right quick, but they locked my ass up. But uh, he was arrested. I got the mug shot. We're going to go and put it up there because y'all know Karen will be on her shit over oh, yeah. here. So we do got it. We got it. Let me go and put it up there for those of you that have not seen it. All right. For those of y'all that ain't seen it, we got it. There him is. And there us is, like they say on Color Purple. And there him is. Okay. Let's let it catch up a little late and see y'all know. There him is. Okay. There him is. Christopher LaVon Fletcher. Okay. Booking number 13J108240. Booking date 4-3-2024 at 7.20 p.m. Birthday 1-2-94, I mean 11-2-94, okay? The charges, this is the case number, as you guys can see there, the statue, the charge description of theft of property in the third, uh, which is uh, $501 to $14.99, all right? Uh, so the arresting agent, uh, HPD, Huntsville Police Department, of course, court type district, uh, court dis disposition, ACT, bond type, he does get a bail, which the bond, as you guys can see, is $5,000. And he has to meet a certain percentage of that to get out, at which I think him, his mom and dad probably already bailed him out. And I said before, shout out to T-Talk with your girl, because she did talk about this in her video. I feel like that they should have let him sit in jail at least for a few weeks. Chris Jr. needs a rude awakening. When you have parents who are hovering parents like that, who keep getting you out of shit when you get into it, you don't learn a lesson. At some point in time, Chris Fletcher and Nell Fletcher, you guys have to, if you're watching my channel, sweethearts, you guys need to have some tough love when it comes to Chris Jr. He is a lost soul. He needs time to think. He needs to be in a place where he can't get out of things. And all he can do is sit and think, okay? He is very troubled. He definitely needs some therapy, but he also needs some fucking jail time because it's, it's at this point now, you are old enough to know right from wrong. You're an adult. You should be working. I know his older brother, Lance, was saying he let him work with him at his company. This was talked about on the show. Said that he would sit around and be lazy and watch the other people uh, work while he sat back thinking, you know, I'm the brother. I'm still going to get a check because that's my brother's company. He's very lazy. He's he's not motivated. He feels uh, entitled like his parents supposed to do every damn thing for him. So at this point, it needs to be tough love when he get into shit don't get him right out don't get him right out yet you can still love your child from behind bars but it's it comes a time when you have to take your hands off your kids and allow them to sit for a while let it simmer let him realize okay mama not coming right down there when you get locked up just i see you got a bail i see you got a bail but i'm not coming down there right now to go and pay it just now i'm gonna let you sit so you can realize that, 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 that the next time you might not get a bill. The next time you might not get one. So this is reality for you. Okay. Eat some of them sandwiches with no cheese for a little bit. Okay. Eat some of that jail food. Go and get you some comments, commissary. Get you a few pen pals before my ass come down there and spend my hard earned to come and get you out of yet another uh, 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 crime that your ass went out here and committed. I don't know what he did before when Nell and him had to go pay for his dogs and do all this other stuff. Obviously, it was something serious because he had to be bonded out of that bullshit. But he needs a rude awakening. Chris and them, take your hands off this boy and allow him to be a man. He will never learn his lesson if you continue to bail him out when he get into shit. And that's just a fact. That's for any other parent out there. And I'm not trying to tell you how to raise your kids, but you have to have tough love when you raise your children. If you always get them out of things when they get into it, you're not teaching them anything. 
He knows that he can go out here and steal credit cards and do whatever he chooses to do. And when they lock his ass up, all I got to do is call mom and daddy. No matter what time I call them, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, if they sleep or not, they're going to get up, get dressed, come down here and get my ass up out of here. And then I'm going to go on out there and do some more shit. And they're going to go on and dig up in their money and come and get me right back out. Let his ass sit in there. The next time he get locked up, sit in jail. Give him three weeks. Let him sweat a little bit. Ain't, that's not going to that's not going to unalive him. Let him sit in there for a while. This is some shit that some high school, some, some underage kids do. Theft of a credit card? Are you fucking kidding me? Get a job. Get a job. Whoever, whoever card it was that you took, I'm pretty sure that was that was not great for them. You imagine how it is if somebody steal your damn credit card. You've already, you know, you, you think you got a, a certain amount of money. Then you go and do somebody and stole your card and then wiped it out. Like, who the fuck are you to go and steal somebody's card and then go buy some fucking tires? Get a job, sir. That's some bum mentality. You giving bum mentality. And all crimes start somewhere. It seems that he's been troubled for quite some time. If you guys watch Love and Marriage Huntsville when they had the little dinner around the table. He seems to have been a troubled child for quite some time. It's always one. It's always one. If you have multiple children, it's going to always be that one that you just have to always struggle with. You always got to go through some shit with that one child. And Chris Fletcher Jr., he is that child that nailing him. Y'all got to put y'all foot down or probably up his ass a little bit just so he can realize that mama and daddy, this is my money. And I don't want to keep spending $5,000 $5, is a lot. Not that you got to spend $5,000 because you got to spend a percentage of that, of that $5,000. I think it's 10% of the $5,000. But still, hell, I don't want to keep spending my hard-earned money on bail for you. Let, that, let his ass sit in there. Let him sit in there. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No. I'm going I'm to I'm um, express to my son, too, when he get older. Get out here and get into some shit. Mama going to let you sit. I love you. It's going to break my heart. It's going to hurt me to the core. But I'm going to have to let you sit for a little while so you can realize. Okay? That's how my cousin was. Got out there, thought his ass was a gangster. Ass got locked up and sitting in jail crying. Thought he was a thug out here. Nigga sitting in there crying. What you crying for? Nigga, you a thug. Man up. What you crying for? You won't cry when you was doing the fucking crying. What you crying for now? What you crying for now? Just sad. <laughs> it's just sad. But uh, prayers, I guess, prayers that he get it right. Prayers that he get it right. Parents, tough love, okay? That's the word for the day. Tough love. These damn kids will drive you crazy if you let them. But all you can do as a parent is pray over your kids, honestly. Teach them the right way. And I keep saying, as a child, train your child up the way that they should go. When they become a grown man, it will not depart from them. Now they're gonna do some things, and you can't, you don't have no control over that. But as a parent, you pray for them that God keep his hands on them so that nothing bad happens to them. They're gonna do some things, they're gonna have some bumps and bruises in life that you're not gonna be able to control. Okay. But as they're learning and as they become a man and or a woman, all you can do is that is pray that God will continue to, to do whatever they're gonna do. Because everybody on this earth, everybody's got some type of gift and everybody has an assignment on their life. And when you start to keep detouring from that assignment, you got to have some type of rude awakening that's going to bring you back in line. And Chris Fletcher Jr., baby, you keep doing this, you, you might need to sit in the, in, the, in the pen for just a little while, baby, so you can get back here because you keep doing this. And your parents, they love you too much to, to allow you to sit there. And that's the problem. They love you too much to allow you to sit in jail for just a little bit longer so that you can see. Because obviously he don't want to be in there. I think He's another one that looked like he's on this shit. Because I saw him in the videos when he was in the club hanging out with Marceau. He, he, he on his little thug thizzle shit. But I guarantee you his ass scared as hell in jail. I bet you he was not that much of a thug in jail. Let his ass sit in there. Them guys in there, they going to let him, let him know real quick. Nigga, who, who, you thought you thought you running something here? You're not. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not the thuggish, ruggish bone, not up in here. Okay. They're going to scare the hell out of his ass. And he's going to be like, you know what? I don't 
don't want to go back here. <laughs> you got to have something that's going to scare the hell out of you. Like, like, like my parents used to say, you got to have something in life that's going to scare the hell out of you to where you're not going to want to go back to that place again. And obviously he's not there yet. Okay. But uh, that's our show for this morning, guys. Thank y'all so much for joining us this morning. This says his parents are enabling him and it's him. Absolutely. Liz Moore. They are enabling him. Stop enabling him for he wind up somewhere where you can't get him out. That's coming. And I want to speak that into nobody's existence. But if you continue to keep getting them out of stuff versus teaching them a lesson and giving them that tough love, it's going to be a place he ain't going to get out of. And you ain't going to be able to touch him. And you know how they treat our black men now. Police don't give a damn about no black child or black man. They don't give a damn about that. They don't give a damn. Okay? They'll take that billy club and go straight upside his damn forehead. And what the fuck you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? Not a god darn thing. Okay? But sit there and watch your child go through what you're going to You can get all the lawyers you want. They don't give a fuck about that. You know what they're going to do? Put them on a paid suspension. They're going to put them on a paid suspension. And your, your child still going to be sitting over there with their head lumped up. Why the police that did it is sitting at home still getting paid on a little vacation, still getting a check. They don't give a fuck about that. So that's all we got this morning, you guys. They said even Michael Jordan's son could not duplicate their fathers. Okay. Period. Period. Okay. Thank you guys for joining. Yes, God with the Billy Club. You know it, Bill Wilson. Y'all know, y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. Raise your kids up the way they should go. Teach them discipline. Teach them to follow rules and regulations. Teach them that there are laws that you have to abide by. And when you don't, there are repercussions behind it. Okay. Don't don't come ask me to come bailing your ass up out of there when you knowingly broke a rule. Like, get out of here. All right, let's get out of here, guys. Love you guys down March. Thank y'all for an awesome job. T Talk with your girl. Thanks for coming through. Any other content creators that join us this morning, thank you. Love you all down, Caramelians. I will see you guys later today for our pop in. Okay, y'all be blessed and never stressed, honey. Let's be productive today. Tell somebody you love them today. All right, let's make it a great day. All right, and bye. Oh, did, did I leave us? Oh, why I feel like I left something out? I don't know. All right, but bye. <laughs> Let's get y'all some music. Get y'all out of here, child. All right. Yes, this is one of y'all favorite ones, honey. Yes. Bye.